Say hi on Facebook Live. Ed Jones right there. Say hi to everybody, Ed. You can talk. They they hear you too, man. Yeah, yeah, we're good. If I got you on, hold on. I got you on the wrong mic. Such a tourist. My bad. How's that? That better? There so, we go. That's better. Yeah. I had the wrong button pressed. Ah, the whole doesn't, you have one help. job, and that that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. Hi to everybody, and uh, and of course here for the Detroit Grand Prix, DetroitGP.com. Yeah. So you were telling me before we came on, and and you're about the third or fourth driver I've talked to about simulators in IndyCar. Yeah. So yesterday, were you in North Carolina? Where yeah, were you? Yeah, we were in Charlotte yesterday um, on the simulator, and uh, before most of the races, actually, we go there. Um, just to prepare, and um, obviously some certain tracks are better modeled than others, and Belle Isle is actually probably one of the better ones on there. So we see, like, you know, was iRacing's become huge. Yeah. I've got a, a nephew of mine who's got into the point now where he's got his own rig, the three the, the three monitors up, he's getting, you know, the force yeah, feedback yeah. and everything. So when you say, like, Belle Isle is close, how how realistic is it for you as a driver when you're on it? It is, it is pretty good, you know, um... Like you said, the, the sim racing now has become so huge, and uh, you know the teams. Like for example, when we go to the simulator, like we did yesterday, and for other circuits, we actually use that for the base setups that actually run on the real car. Really? And we're testing actual setups that we want to try in real life, and so we'll usually try on the simulator first, and if we think they're positive things, then we're gonna save that for the track and and try and test it in real life, and certain things that we don't think actually get us anywhere we'll just leave out so um it is that useful now and um it's only getting better i think it's cool too when, when you're watching indycar racing people go like well they're on an oval so you have an oval setup it's not true i mean like the setup that you have even for a road course for example there's no such thing as a road course what you're doing here at belle isle for the detroit grand prix i would imagine is a little bit different than what you did at you know st pete or something like that yeah, it's all different, and um, as I was saying before that, you know, the diversity of the tracks in IndyCar is what really makes it great, is that, um, you know, a few weeks ago we were on the Indy Grand Prix, a permanent road course, Indy 500, the oval, and now we're on a street course, and um, they all require completely different setups, and again, each street circuit, each road course, each oval, they all have their different little tweaks as well, and um, it's all about adapting the car for those different grip levels, different bump levels, here's very bumpy, um, but, uh, yeah, all those different factors that you have to consider. Is Belle Isle, and I know obviously with the duel here, the two yeah. races, is it more mental or physical for you as a driver? I think it's more physical, really. Um, for example, probably Indy 500 is the most mental, mentally draining race. Um, here's probably one of the most physical because you have two races, which is the only, ra only race weekend they actually, ha actually have that, and coming off a month of nonstop. Um, non-stop work is, is pretty challenging. And then we always talk about, I remember talking to Will a couple of years ago that he shared the story that going through one and two at Belle Isle, yeah. that he actually broke a strap in practice, a harness strap uh, yeah, from I, the G-forces. Yeah. Yeah. No, one and two is extremely quick, um, extremely bumpy, and it, I was think that's probably my favorite section on the track. It's a lot of fun. The um, Because, you know, as as a normal driver, we're used to really, I don't know what you'd call it, but forward Gs. And, you know, when we hit our brakes in our car, yeah. we feel that. So we understand that. But lateral Gs, we don't experience what you guys yeah, do. Exactly. Um, is that a whole more than just your neck? I mean, is that a whole body kind of weight when you're going through a turn? Yeah, it's a whole body. And, um, again, on certain places, especially short ovals, like sometimes you can struggle to breathe for that split second or, you know, for a second or so when you're in the highest loads. Um, and so it makes it even more more draining but um, again just for me comparing you know even anything you feel even if you are braking late in a road car or comparing anything to the race car it's just it's almost like being on a playstation compared to the you know <laughs> it's just so totally different and um, like nothing applies really from driving on the road to, to the real car and um, you know from the way you feel you hit the brake and, and the brake you hit the brake half as hard in a road car as you do in the race car you'd be through the windshield immediately you know because you don't have the assist power assistance and you're hitting the brake as hard as you can each time because that's the force it needs and there's no power steering and everything is all more manual right really so like i, I went so as a, as a fan turn using his right hand to turn the wheel in his left hand to hold the gear shift to get it. Yeah. That kind of strain on your body. And then at the same thing, like you said, I mean.
it's a moment. Actually, only my first year of racing in cars was it still the sequential gearbox where you had to, to shift, whereas now we have the paddle shift, and that definitely makes things a lot easier because there, there's a lot of places where you'd be driving one hand, obviously, as you're shifting at the same time, and that's definitely made an improvement. What's it like driving for Ed Carpenter? He seems like, Ed Carpenter, to me, seems like one of those super cool guys. Yeah. He just does, like one of those dudes I want to go out and have a beer with. No, Ed is awesome. And uh, last week, I'm, well, the, this month was the first, where are we now? Are we still in May? Well, anyway. You're the good. First, no, you're good. <laughs> sorry, I'm a bit lost. But uh, the, the first time that I actually experienced Ed as a driver as well. And it was really funny to see the contrast, how he changes from being team owner to, to a driver. And um it's just he's just a completely different person. Do but, you guys, as a driver, as a team, do you have time to download what happened at Indy now, or is there a point later in the season where maybe you get a gap in the schedule? Yeah, well, we've gone through, you know, made a lot of notes, um, debriefed, and um, try to figure out what quite went wrong on, on race day. You know, I think we were so strong throughout the whole month, and probably our weakest day was was race day, which is a bit very frustrating when that's that's the one that counts. But um, you know, they're always working on things um, with the team with Texas coming up very soon next weekend actually. Um, things apply from Indy to there, so of course they're gonna they're looking at the data and things that we found from the race, what can be used to to improve in Texas. So um, you guys though, so so at Indy, and I've always thought this like maybe for drivers and teams, in some way it's almost too long because you can get the car to where you want it. Yeah. But what's the old saying? Never rub the fur off a teddy bear. But we're human beings. We're gonna sit there and keep tinkering with stuff. We can't. It we is, can't help yeah. it. You're just gonna keep messing with it. It's so, it's so easy to do that. But at the same time, it's very easy to get complacent as well. You know, sometimes you, I mean, in, in the sense that you can get to a point with the car, and sometimes you just like, you don't want to do do more because you're like, oh, the car's in a good place. You don't want to damage it or anything like that. But the track evolves all the time, and um, throughout the month, it changes so much. The track that. A good car on day one isn't necessarily the same as it, you know, on the last day of May. And the temperature plays a huge factor as well. We saw that. I think we were probably strong in the cooler conditions. Race day was a little bit warmer, and the Penske guys seemed really strong then. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, is that I've noticed an Indy car this year, and I am, and anyone who knows me, I'm a, I've been a huge advocate for the series since I was a little kid. Yeah. I go back to Bobby Unser. Don't tell Mario Andretti that. But anyway, I'm a Bobby Unser fan. Um, but what's interesting to me is I see that you guys have more confidence in that you didn't last year, but I see this confidence and level of commitment when you're driving. When I mean like it feels to me when I'm watching you on road courses, you guys are driving the cars in deeper than you did last year. Yeah. You're pushing more like Indy that the end of that race between Simon and Alexander, those were two, two men who were going to, if they had gloves, they would have fought. I mean, they yeah. were they were going to get after it. And it, do you feel like that? Like it you guys is, have pushed the envelope a little bit with the, the cars? cars? The cars are a bit different as well, especially for the 500. The biggest difference was actually the tires. They increased the front grip. You saw last year's race, it was so hot that no one could really overtake. It wasn't the most exciting. Oh, we were there last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, wasn't it was the most hot, but it was still fun to watch. But it, but it's different this year. You know, they've they've changed a bit the front wing so you can follow closer so overtaking's better. And also they improved the tire. But what we found throughout the month of May, and everyone did, is that if you're the first two cars, there's no cars in front of you to, you can overtake as much as you like. But as soon as you fall back to like third, it gets more difficult, fourth even more. Once you're fifth or back, it's almost impossible to overtake anyone. Is that that dirty air yeah, that we talked about? Yeah, okay. because the disturbance in the air, and it just gets worse and worse in the pack to about... When you're like 15 back, you got no chance to do it, you know? So um, it, it is difficult, and that's why it was great at the front for those guys, and you didn't really see much happening after that. But you got, it's like pack racing there. So I, I've heard it described, too, that like when you pull out at a place like Indian, if you are in the back, it's like someone put a parachute on the back of your car. Yeah. Is that really what it feels like? Yeah, you just all of a sudden crazy, just go backwards? Yeah, and if you don't have the slipstream, and if you're running side by side with someone on the straight, and then... Eventually, you know, there'll be the line of cars in front. If they've got the line, they'll just accelerate away from you. It's just... So, during the race, as I was watching on NBC, someone, I don't remember who it was, one of the announcers made a reference to a kill mode in the car. That there's like, you know, Mercedes, uh, always yeah. people complain about Mercedes has that party mode or whatever yeah, for yeah. qualifying. Is there a mode in the car where you can go a little bit over 100% just for a couple laps? It's not over 100%, but, um, you know, both manufacturers, I've been with both now, and you know, throughout the race, you're doing different things. You know, at certain points, you're saving fuel. At certain points, you're just running a, a normal mapping. 
and there's there's also an attack mode that both have and you have a lot of amount of laps you're allowed to use in the race so of course you've got to decide when is the best point to use that usually at the end right but um there's different modes for diff- depending on how much fuel you need to save or how flat out you want to go well, one of the big stories, obviously, Indy, was Fernando Alonso and watching what happened with McLaren. I don't want yep. to revisit that because you guys, I'm sure you've been asked about it a hundred times. But was interesting to me, that's the first time I've really watched all the weight jacking that you that, that as drivers you do during qualifying. Yeah. You're constantly working the yeah, car, yeah. you know, based on the wind. I'm sure you're on the backstretch. The wind's yeah, coming in a different no, that direction. That's a huge factor. Do you weight jack? How much here in Belle Isle do you adjust you the car during lap? You don't. You can't do weight jacker, but you have the front and rear anti-roll bars. So you can stiffen and soften those while you're driving. But it was interesting, like you said, with, with, with the McLaren thing and Alonso. You know, Alonso is a great driver. Um, it's, a, it's a shame. You know, it would have been great for the show for him to qualify. Right. But it also, you know, it just highlights motorsport, like, in a nutshell, kind of, and how how wrongly perceived a lot of things are. And it's, you know, of course, you have a good run and drivers are given these opportunities in, in the best cars and the best teams. And you look like a superstar the whole time. But, right. You know, uh, Alonso's exceptionally great driver, but also, you know, he's won these races with Toyota when it's the most dominant car by a mile. One Daytona in the best car by a mile. And he, he won an F1 when he had the best car by a mile. And, you know, it makes a lot of other drivers look average when they haven't really had those opportunities. But you put them in an average car or a not-so-great car, and it's very hard to do do a lot more. And that was interesting. I think it's the first time he's had something. Obviously, he struggled with McLaren recently in F1, but... It was interesting, you know, from the perspective of people realizing that some of these top drive, you know, the top drivers, they are great. You're watching, you, you you're watching equipment. without going to one of the F1 thing, but you're watching it right now with Ricardo. Yeah, we're no, watching exactly. what Ricardo's dealing with with Renault. I mean, yeah. he's a backmarker. Yeah, you know, Monaco, I think he'd get up to tenth or something. Yeah, Ricardo would be always be up front with Red Bull. Yeah, and as a compliment to IndyCar racing, look at Patricio. Yeah, he's in the Red Bull program. He couldn't qualify for the 500. Uh, exactly. I mean, you know, it's like, and that's a compliment to you guys as a sport. And I've said this, and I'll say it, I, I, I've said it a hundred times. Front to back, there are no back markers in, in IndyCar this year. Right. There's none. It's you guys all tough. get after it. And you as a driver, you, you've got to enjoy that. No, I love it. It is extremely hard, and it makes the margins even smaller, you know. Um, in qualifying, I think from first to last in Indy, the average the small difference between the first and last speed was like 2.4 miles an hour right, or something. Yeah. I don't know if that's correct, but it was, they said the fourth closest in history. And yeah, it, it makes things, you know, everyone has to raise their game, you know, the drivers, the teams and, and everything. So 30th anniversary of racing here in Detroit. Yeah. And out of Belle Isle this weekend, Detroit Grand Prix, uh, DetroitGP.com, obviously the website for tickets both days. And you guys, so what do you do Saturday night after the race? Do you just sleep? Can you sleep. Can you simply unwind? Eat as much as you can and go to sleep. Do you try to exercise at all on Sunday or no? Um, what, before the race? Yeah. No, I just, you know, again, you know, Friday's like the warm-up. You just try and rest up, to be honest, rest up and, and get ready for the race. I don't exercise in the morning before. I would imagine, too, as much as we talk about you as a driver, Ed, yeah. that, you know, your your team themselves, you know, God forbid something happens on Saturday. Yeah. Then all of a sudden they're pulling an all-nighter. Yeah, right? and that's I mean, the thing people don't always forget is the the most important people which is the, the crew and everyone that works for the team because those are the guys have been working all month and then working monday tuesday wednesday these last few days preparing the cars from indy to detroit and again they're going to be working flat out so um those are the guys who have it tough us drivers think we have it tough but in reality those are the guys putting in a huge amount of work and um i think that has to go appreciated and as you said you've got to Make sure you have a clean race Saturday because otherwise it's going to be tough for Sunday. And then uh, you get a drive with Scuderia Corsa. Did yeah. I say it right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I'm jealous. Anything Scuderia in front of it is cool, yeah. right? I mean, it just sounds cool. You've got like the coolest racing. Ed, not Ed Carpenter. That's a guy that I, like I said I'm going to go have a beer and a burger with. But yeah. Scuderia Corsa, when you walk through, the, it was like, whoo, who are they? Yeah. It's just cool, man, to be driving for, for that team. No, and people fantastic. don't know them, but outside Indy as well. Yeah. It's not like this is a one-car shot. They got a lot. Yeah, no, yeah. they have the IMSA program yeah. as well, and so they're here this weekend with the Ferrari, and um, it's a great uh, group of people to be to be working with now, and um, they're only only going to get more and more involved in the series, and I think it's a really great addition for the series. So um, 
looking forward to seeing what we're going to be doing in the future. Last question for you. And thank you so much for taking time out. I know you guys have been so busy, and you know, to come in this morning too, and to Pat and everybody with Indy, you guys have been just fantastic, really, through the whole month of May, and as we get ready for this weekend here at Belle Isle. Um, I know that the the race was broadcast on Sky was Sky One, wasn't it? Or Sky? Yeah. Okay. Sky it, Sports. F1. Okay. Sky Sports F One. And I remember talking to Simon that he had said it was also on Canal, Canal. Plus. Right. Yeah. So IndyCar now being seen overseas on a more regular basis, at least the Indy 500. Does that? And I know we have Carlin, and I know McLaren. If McLaren doesn't commit to next year after this, come on. I read that that they don't think they're going to. Come on. Um, they said they need to figure out the 500 first. Well, they need to figure out a lot of things with the racing team. But if this doesn't motivate them, then nothing does. Yeah. When the girl says no, you don't just never ask her again. you got to come back. You have to come back. Yeah. Or it's going to be, it's a black eye on their team right now. It, look what they're doing in F1 to make it right. They're working their ass off. They have Lando Norris and all these guys, and they're working their way up. If this is how you leave it as McLaren with Indy, shame on you. They, they have to. Yeah. But my point is, all these teams in the UK, all the different disciplines, all the feeder series that are coming, they're all watching you guys going, I want a piece of that. That looks like fun. You guys are running at Coda. You're running here in Detroit on the yeah. on, on Belle Isle, Indy, and everything else. I mean, and I hope to God next year, maybe somebody could work it out. I'd love to see you guys do the Roval at Charlotte. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. That would be cool. As you said, it's it's crazy how, um, you know, when I came over in 2015, there still wasn't a huge amount of European people coming over but since then when i when i came there's been so many guys that i've raced with which have made the swap as well and right. um it's getting even more popular as, as we go on did you read erickson's note that he posted after the 500 i haven't seen it you yet. really should yeah. it's he's the second i remember takuma sato when he came here and I'll, I'll, he came here and before he went india i asked him what would you rather win monaco or indy and he laughed at me and went oh monaco and then after he won indy i saw him the next year here in belle island he grabbed me and goes i want to change my answer yeah. Uh, because uh, what happened, the scope of it, and Marcus and Erickson wrote the same thing. He didn't understand the scope of what it was until they're there. Yeah. I mean, you will always, you can, no matter what else, you're an astronaut. What I mean by that is when I go into a bar, people go, what do you do? I'm a DJ at a local radio station in Detroit. Oh, that's cool. What do you do? I'm an IndyCar driver. You're the astronaut. You're the cool one in the bar from that point on. You drove at Indy. You yeah. For the rest of your life, Ed, you drove a car in the Indy 500. Yeah, and I think it's... What annoys me, well, not annoys me, but it was that first year when I finished third in my, my r- rookie race, and you still you don't realize until after the race or a few weeks after, or even till the next year you go and just realize how when you get those opportunities to run at the front, how important, how limited they are, and I uh, just hope I get another chance to be fighting for the win again. You will. Uh, it's you, you, you've always been fast, and you're a great driver, and you've got a great team too, man. You guys, you you can feel it coming, can't you? It's coming there. All right. Ed Jones, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. We're going to get you now. After, so then afterwards, you're going to be what? A wrestler? Or are you going to be UFC or MMA? Well, I want to be decide? a boxer, but I'm too You want to be a I'm boxer? Not, not Is this this whole that. Anthony Joshua thing again? No, I'm not really keen on Anthony Josh- Joshua. To thank you. I like Deontay Wilder or thank Tyson you. Fury. We have a guy here. Okay, Joshua, come on over. I know I he's know. coming over here it to really, fight this it week. It winds me up so much when I see what he does, and then he just... Why can't he just fight someone proper? Do they... It, there's two guys who are waiting. I, no, I know. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Well, it's so so weird to think that boxing would, would avoid a confrontation <clears throat> yeah. here in Detroit you know, with, with uh, Tommy Hearns. We should get you over to Crocs sometime. Could yeah. put on some gloves because you have so much free time while you're here in Detroit. Yeah. Ed, you're awesome. Thank you so much for coming yeah. in. Thank you. Everybody, DetroitGP.com. Make sure you get your tickets. Thanks, guys.